how this part of the world can weather ongoing global risks involving the war in Ukraine and the U.S.-China rivalry that is affecting trade and supply chains. That was the focal point as representatives from several Asian countries today met in Seoul for a discussion on economic policy. Our Moon Aerium met them and follows this report. The second conference for the Asian Council of Economic Policy kicked off in Seoul on Wednesday. In person for the first time since its establishment back in October 2021, face-to-face -face talks mark the start of the post-pandemic era. The meeting focused on the recovery of Asia's economy amid ongoing uncertainties such as the unresolved war in Ukraine and strained U.S.-China relations affecting trade industries and supply chains. Asia is the world's largest market, accounting for more than half of the world's population. Asia's strategic importance is higher than ever now that supply chain reorganization has emerged as a global topic. During the previous conference, which went ahead online two years ago, think tanks and governmental organizations from five countries took part. This time, the growing importance of cooperation between countries in the Asia-Pacific region prompted two more countries to take part, Thailand and the Philippines. Representatives from the two countries discussed their hopes for a reaffirmation and development of economic relations between Asian countries, particularly with South Korea. We're also looking at other emerging uh, industries, such as uh, green metals, uh, creative industries, and um, uh, in other um, industries, uh, including um, we've received uh, Korean support on the analysis of um, nuclear, nuclear energy as well. So uh, these are uh, actually all very important uh, um, uh, industries and avenues for, for cooperation between the, the two countries. Other new additions to the ACP meeting this year included global agencies such as the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific. UNESCAP highlighted the Sustainable Development Goals for 2030 and recommended its own policy priorities for governments for economic policies. Among these, sustainable economic development through eco-friendly policies and the inclusion of vulnerable groups such as the elderly were emphasised, particularly with regards to Asia's ageing population. Providing those, uh, of course, the vulnerable groups and also elderly, uh, the, as, uh, easy access to uh, different services through digital, digital, uh, dig, di digitalization, for example. So and digital uh, uh, literacy among elderly people it should be an, 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 should be an, an, an agenda. With 2023 marking the midway point for the time frame set for the UN Sustainable Development Goals, it looks as though countries will have to step up their game through heightened cooperation, not only between nations, but also across different sectors to revitalize the economy in a sustainable manner. Moon Haryan, Arirang News.